and we're talking about what is the meaning of the word day in Genesis 1 and 2. And uh, Hugh and Jason, you haven't gotten into the conversation. Hugh, you wanted to talk about this evening and morning? Sure, namely that Genesis 1 is the only place in the Bible where you see evening and morning associated with the word yom, the word translated day. In fact, there's only one other place in the Bible where you see evening and morning even together. And uh, that's Psalm 55, 17, where King David says, I'll pray in the evening and in the morning and noontime. Again, the word day doesn't show up there. So we have to look at the context in Genesis 1 to see how we're going to interpret that evening and morning. There's no basis for saying that there's a rule of grammar that it must be 24 hours. Jason? Well, you know, I would say that when you have evening and morning with day, you've got what's called a syntagmatic relationship, which which means if I, if I said the house is large, house and large are in a symptomatic relationship, they each qualifies the other and helps us to understand the meaning of the passage. And so evening and morning being ordinary words, ordinary markers of time, qualifies day to be an ordinary marker of time as well. Jason, why, why do you think that uh, evening and morning is not used on the seventh day? Well, you know, it could be because the seventh day, I mean, it's special. It's God's special uh, day of rest. I mean, it was sort of a unique day. It was the Sabbath day, and God blessed it. It was a, it was a particularly holy day. So that's the reason why the formula is a little different there. Walter, I love it. You're, you're the Hebrew teacher, and I can remember in class you saying, you got to stick with the text. So he's saying you're not sticking with the text. So talk back to him here a little bit. <laughs> no, the, the, uh, I have uh, really loved that fourth day. And uh, actually, I think that if we're going to press the biblical text, we've got day four, day five, day six that are possible candidates for 24 hours. But uh, four out of the seven are, uh, do not seem to have that uh, qualification because day one, day two, day three are ahead of God's creation. And day five can, can I is one that doesn't seem to end. I, I still don't understand what Dr. Kaiser is trying to say here. Um, day one, day two, day three, before God's creation. I, I mean, the, the word day uh, used in Genesis 1 for the first day, second day, third day is used exactly the same way. Uh, for the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, with evening and morning and a number. You've got night added into day one. Uh, but um, explain to me, you know, the formula is the same for the six days. Why? Uh, wh I, I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying. Good question. What uh, is it? Well, let me come back then, Ken, and explain to you. There are 508 references of Yom mm -hmm. in the translated day in the King James. I'm going to use mm -hmm. the authorized version. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of that, 58 different ways in which it is rendered. Mm -hmm. Not always day. Mm -hmm. So in the well, King that, James right. Bible, it has all these others, which means there has to be a choice made when we come to each uh, individual text. But, but context always drives that choice. I mean, the preponderant usage, That's what of, I'm saying. The preponderant 